Alright guys, Tactical Rave here back again today and first thing to mention is that tomorrow is going to be the final day I'll be in the UK for about a week. I'm going on an actual holiday which will be nice. I think I've taken like one day off work in the last um, four months I've been in. That's my actual full-time job. I don't take days off videos. Um, so it'll be nice to get away. I have pre-recorded some videos for you guys. Just after recording this one, I'm going to record Friday's video because I won't have time with packing and all of that to make a video for Friday. Then on Saturday, well, the day I fly out, so I'm going all the way to the States, if I didn't mention that, all the way to the West Coast. Uh, spend a week and a little bit out there, which should be very nice indeed in San Francisco. Pretty cool. Um, and yeah, basically, I've re-recorded a couple of videos for the flight and maybe for some days I'm busy. I'll try and keep you guys up to speed with news and stuff. Um, shouldn't be too difficult to make videos when I'm out there. Should have the time. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to say to start off the video. Hope you guys are enjoying the videos. I got some really great comments on yesterday's uh, video talking about how maybe you don't even play the new Call of Duty, maybe you don't follow the scene that closely, but you still enjoy the videos, uh, which honestly is great to hear, and um, you know, comments like that make my day, right, so thank you very much. Let's hop right into it then. Today wanted to talk about the main story really being uh, the developer David Mickner, I believe his name was, we'll get into that in just a second, talking uh, talking back at some pros and a little bit of an interaction that went on there and I thought it was interesting given, especially given the state of the game right now, for a developer to come out and, and say these kind of things is a little bit interesting to me. Um, and then tomorrow I did want to talk about how the developers and CDL and Activision have made strides to improve the game um, and that's some stuff that came out over the last couple of hours but I'll leave that to tomorrow's video because otherwise Otherwise, there won't be any content going up tomorrow, just how the logistics are working. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Um, let's hop into this firstly, because Battle Nonsense, every single year when a game comes out, pretty much any game, he does um, testing on the tick rate of the servers. Okay, so the tick rate, let's go into some sort of explanation here. Typically, what you see in a standard AAA tier title in an Overwatch, a Call of Duty, um, or what, not even a Call of Duty, what am I saying, a Counter-Strike, one of the top tier games, you usually have a tick rate in public matches of 60 hertz, right? In Counter-Strike, in competitive, they play on 128 hertz, that's the tick rate, the refresh rate, effectively. What this means is, is that the server is sending information about what's going on in the server to you, the client, and then back to the server 60 times a second in a 60 hertz server. Now, apparently it's 62 hertz in public matches, which is pretty good going. Effectively, what this means is 60 times a second, the positions of everyone on the map will be updated. And this really is what can cause um, super bullets, as we'll look at in a second. And it can also really um, enhance cameraing in the game. So for example, let's just have an example of this, because in Infinite Warfare, I think it was like 10 hertz in custom games. Custom games always tends to be lower because effectively it's cheaper for Activision not to have to host uh, custom games on servers that have higher tick rates. In, inf in Infinite Warfare, it was down at like 10 hertz and this meant effectively if someone comes flying around the corner and the tick has just been before they come around the corner so the information in the game has just updated just one millisecond before they come around the corner they will come around the corner and they will see you stood right there 10 whole milliseconds or 10, 100 milliseconds even um you know, point 0.1 of a second before the next tick happens and you will then see them coming into your screen because the their position coming into that window doesn't appear for you because the tick has just been if you increase the tick rate higher and higher and higher that issue you know it nullifies down to the best of its ability and also it nullifies to the point where a single bullet will be fired within a single tick, which is a big issue that happens when you have lower tick rate servers. So I wanted to go and discuss that a little bit. Ground War 20 hertz, you know, 12 hertz tick rate is genuinely pathetic. Like back in uh, Infinite Warfare, as I said, when it got discovered that it was only like 10 hertz, then they bumped it up. I think um, Modern Warfare Remastered had the same thing. They bumped it up to like 30 or something. And 30 is, you know, doable, right? It's not awful. 12 is just pathetic. And, um, you know, we'll go on to this. So Bell Nonsense goes on to say, if Modern Warfare has guns with a fire rate of more than 600 RPM, which uh, pretty much all guns are, right? The M4, for reference, fires at 833, the Kilo at 800, the MP7 at 833, the MP5 maybe 750, something like that, maybe 800. So all the meta guns much higher than 600 RPM. This causes super bullets on listen servers due to the 12 hertz tick rates. Effectively, there are not enough updates to have one update per fired round, so damage gets bundled. This is a nice little explanation he gives. Um, this probably won't fit completely on the screen, but I think this will explain it quite nicely. So a 600 round per minute weapon, uh, let's just make sure this is on screen, 
as you can see here, this is a 10 hertz tick rate, so everything, I think he made something very similar back in the Infinite Warfare days or Modern Warfare Remastered when I watched this, uh, when I watched this, the same video effectively he made back then. Now, uh, 600 RPM, a bullet is fired every 100 milliseconds, um, so it's just after the tick, which means that every single tick that happens, a bullet is fired, not a problem. If you have a weapon, you know, higher than that, then the problem is that every bullet that's fired 80 milliseconds apart with a 750 RPM gun, let's say this is an MP5, something like that, the issue is that one tick comes here, then by the time the next tick comes around, two bullets effectively hit at once, which is why on custom games you sometimes feel you just get incinerated, right? Because all their damage hits at once, you might peek a corner and have no damage go into you, and then instantly you might get two bullets to the head and you're effectively just dead then and there massive issue with lower tick rate servers as you can see by example 60 hertz which is in public matches or in pretty much any other good game um will more than compensate for this and 60 hertz is definitely um you know that's very very solid of course in some games counter-strike for example i know that the pros will play on 128 tick servers so they take it even to the next level um but like 10 12 hertz is just just really pathetic figures and in light of that we then have this david mickner situation that i wanted to talk about so I showed you guys yesterday a video of, um, I think it was Turn Up Too Easy, showing this glitch, right, where the dead silence will not properly activate. So you see here, this individual tries to activate dead silence if Twitter video player will work because it's just awful. But you you get the idea, right? Yesterday, he tried to activate dead silence. Effectively, it just span into the circle. Nothing happened at all. And um, yeah, it didn't work for him. Honestly, like, I can't believe how bad Twitter is. Oh, here we go. It might even work for you. Hang on a second. He goes to activate dead silence and it just disappears. Okay, finally, we actually did get us here so yeah that's not an intended situation and turn up made a video of that yesterday and marcus um you know at david mickner in this i'm pretty sure in turn up's tweet he did the same it was a thread with mad cat mad cat said um you know all they fixed was the trophy system and um like or the, the name of the trophy system even they, they changed the they changed the wording effectively because there was a spelling error and david mickner replies with well we actually did update the the cdl settings and turn up in that thread had a video showing that well it wasn't working properly so that seemed to be some communication to me but as it turns out David Mickner then quotes this tweet and says perfect example of how to communicate the patch is 100% correct previously the field upgrade wasn't enabled so this was in the CDL settings when they first released the CDL settings you couldn't even use dead silence so effectively typically the way it works is if you want to play game battles you have to set up all the settings manually horrible in the uh, the CDL settings you just click CDL settings and it back in the day on Ghost for example you just pressed eSports settings everything was uh, perfectly set in stone now previously they'd made a mistake effectively where dead silence and other field upgrades weren't allowed in the CDL settings clearly a mistake so now they reverted that but they didn't revert the bug now personally I'd never experienced this bug um, which is the bug that he's referring to in this video and the one that turned up to easy had yesterday so I don't know whether this bug happened before in CDL settings or whether that has something to do with it because personally I've never seen it and I it's worked fine for me always and then he goes on to say pros have official channels to us and we were never informed I fixed this in less than five minutes once I was aware funny comment really I fixed this in less than five minutes like a bit of a humble brag right in a way but at the same time okay this took you five minutes but what other things that are wrong with the game have taken forever and have not yet been fixed you know, ad admittedly, in tomorrow's video, I will talk about some things that have now been fixed and steps they are taking in the right direction, but arguably it's taken way too long, right? So um, if it was really this quick, it would be too breezy, right? So then Paddy P goes on, goes on a rampage here in the replies, and you know, a lot of the pros kind of clap back at this. And I think to, to a fair degree, especially considering the state of the game right now is not pretty. So if you're, you're a David Mickner and you're saying, well, you know, we have official channels, we were never informed about this, what exactly are you expecting? Why don't, you know, there, there's part of me that says, why don't you just make the game not be a beta when it releases? And then we maybe we wouldn't have so many of these issues. I understand bugs are always going to happen. You fix bugs, new bugs come up, it happens. Um, but at the same time, it's a big issue when the game launches and it feels to me like it's still in a beta state, right? Um, it's, it's not pretty. So Wake says, look, David, I like you a lot, but there are not real official channels, only a line with Activision that then goes to you guys, Infinity Ward, and is put on an unknown priority timeline with no specific developer rep in Infinity Ward to handle things for us. There is no method that is effective and, you know, that there was um, effectively no reply. Uh, from David on this one. Parasite then follows up with, that's why I just tweet these guys or Ash. I think that's uh, Ashton uh, Williams, who's one of the, the, the PR people and deals with some of this stuff as well. 
And then Jcat replies as well, one, I never saw this bug, neither did I. Yes, there are official channels, but no actual contact with the devs. There are quite a few things we pointed out before the game was even out that have still not been addressed. I know we can be annoying and rude, but man, this tweet is very misleading. He responds, feedback and bugs are entirely different. One is a suggestion, another is observing unintended behavior. In all aspects of our game, we want to know both, but especially bugs so we can smooth out the experience to make way for feedback. And you know, I understand this, and he also does uh, John and Nicholson, then a journalist, then replies, in what capacity is the Skycam overlooking the entire map when you respawn to so you see where exactly the enemy is competitive, and this has since been fixed, and I'll talk about that tomorrow, or at least it's fixed in an upcoming patch, which is a pretty damn big deal, um, it is nice to see that there is being some feedback listened to here by the developer team, um, but you know, it's still not great, and, and Silly then says, yeah, it never happened to me before, don't think I've seen it either, boot a, boot a custom match in CDL hardpoint with Dead Science and you'll see it um yeah we don't use the cdl rules because they're broken so yeah i wonder which side you fall on this i, I think at times the pros can be unreasonable of course they tweet about things a lot of people in the community tweet with um you know it's not always the most constructive criticism right bit of hate i guess whatever you want to say in there definitely things are very charged people want to love call of duty they want to love the game for competitive there's a lot of things right now that make that very difficult to do. Um, at the same time, I do feel sorry for the dev developers, of course, having to deal with this. But um, but yeah, like clearly, as far as the pros are concerned, there isn't really an official channel tweeting about how easy the game is to fix and stuff when there are so many clear issues that for competitive play and also some, some bugs that have been spotted. There was a bug that I uh, probably will play on screen for you guys right now of um, the, the doorway on, or it's like a window on St. Petrograd. You can just see people on a bomb. You can see all their names plates all this stuff things that really break the game for competitive um for the developer to come out and say like oh you should communicate this in the right way it, it almost invokes a response of well um you know maybe we shouldn't even be having this conversation right if these things were, were ironed out before launch but that's not really how call of duty is made nowadays it's um it's it's rushed out we, we know how it works right they rush it out they try and sell as many copies as they can um and then they they hold on for dear life so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video like if you did subscribe if you're new as always I would greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, leave your thoughts below. I'll see you tomorrow in a video I'm about to make in about 10 seconds time. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Sandbags, uh, sandbags, sandbags, sandbags. 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 They're on B, they're on B, they're on B. Enemy I'm back B. He's dead. B, B, two dead B, two dead B. Two guys, two guys from B, two guys from B. One's bottom mid to B and the other guy's from sandbags to B. God, end the game, end the game, end the fucking game. I'm fucking, I'm so sick and tired of this right now. Middle dead. Good job, good job, 2-2-2, two, 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 They're dirt, they're dirt. They're, they're gonna We're 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 gonna We're